You're listening to Profit Without Worry, episode number 114. Have you ever wondered what the best way to spend your time and money attracting new clients into your business is? Well, I'm breaking down some examples to get you started today. Hey there, I'm Michelle Evans, and this is the show where coaches, experts, and business owners like us get real about what it takes to create a profitable online business. I can tell you from experience that nonstop hustle plus random acts of marketing do not equal success. So how do we attract a steady flow of clients and sales without all the hustle? This is the Profit Without Worry podcast. Hey, hey, welcome back and thanks so much for tuning in. Let's jump right into today's show because this is such an important topic for all business owners out there. I had a conversation with a client today about ROI or return on investment. This person has been um, a client of mine doing Facebook ads off and on for about a year and a half, like 18 months-ish. And she comes back and rehires me whenever she has a major promotional activity or like something new to launch, right? And our latest ads, they did really, really well in terms of bringing new people into her audience and converting them into buyers. So we did a whole long ad where we brought people in, we warmed them up, and then we did some sales ads. And this is awesome and it's totally worth celebrating. But then this client asked me a really, really great question. She said, Michelle, as I'm looking at the ROI for this advertising versus ROI on other things I do like Facebook and Instagram lives, speaking, social media, blogging, LinkedIn cold outreach and whatnot, how should I be thinking about them? How should I compare them? How do I know that spending up money on Facebook ads is the right thing to do for ROI or return on my investment versus all the other things that I could be doing, especially when some of those things don't cost me anything out of pocket? This is a great question. It's an awesome question. And hopefully one that you've asked yourself in the past, even if you don't do any paid advertising right now, just knowing like, what's the best place for me to spend my time and my money so that I can bring new people into my business? That is a good question to ask. And I want to break this down for you just like I did for my client, because it's important to have a good grasp on all of this when you're deciding making, you know, prioritizing things in your business and really focusing on where you spend your time and your money to grow your business. Any business owner deciding where to spend their resources, which in this instance is time and money, needs to understand how those decisions affect your bottom line, affect your revenue. That's why return on investment or ROI is so important to understand. So first, let's talk about how you calculate ROI. So the formula for this is pretty straightforward. You take the revenue or the sales that you make minus your marketing costs and you get a number and then you divide that number by the marketing costs. So let's let's use a real example here because I don't want you to tune out like this math is really important. And it's really important in arming you with the right information to drive your business. So for example, let's say that your revenue was $20,000. So you made $20,000 in sales. That's your revenue number, right? And your marketing cost was $2,000. The formula would be $20,000 in revenue or sales minus $2,000. That's $18,000, right? And then we want to divide it by your marketing cost, which is $2,000. So it's 18,000 divided by 2,000 or a 9X ROI, which is a fantastic ROI number. It basically means that for every dollar that you spent, you got about nine bucks in return. Hello, that's a great return on your investment. The problem though for many businesses, but especially small businesses, is that it's not really easy to identify the marketing costs that go into your sales. For example, let's say that this month you do $20,000 in revenue, and for simplicity's sake, we're just going to say that it's all new clients, like it's not a client that has been with you in the past. So you know that your revenue number for the month is $20,000. 
But let's say that you did a whole bunch of things in the month, like LinkedIn cold outreach, that you did daily Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram posting. Some are evergreen, some are new posts, but every single day you're on all those platforms. You did two Facebook Lives during the month and then you repurposed them into Instagram videos and LinkedIn videos. Let's say you did a podcast interview, you did four blog posts, you did eight emails to your list, you did 10 sales calls, and $500 in Facebook ads. Phew, you can see here, this can be really tricky to know, okay, where the heck did my new sales come from? Was it my Facebook ads? Was it my cold outreach on LinkedIn, emailing my list? And what was the ROI on all of these marketing efforts? And in fact, most people would say that the cost of marketing for the month was $500 on Facebook ads, right? So you hear people say, hey, I spent 500 bucks on Facebook ads and I got $20,000 in sales. But that's not the full story. And I'm about to break down how the number is a whole lot more than $500 spent on Facebook ads. Let me start by saying here that I want you to be patient. I want you to be patient with yourself. What I'm about to go through, you're not going to be able to calculate overnight. You're, it won't happen right away. But when you get your head around calculating ROI and tracking everything that you do in your business, it's going to make a big difference in absolutely everything you do and how empowered you feel about making these decisions because you're gonna know where to spend your time and your money and where not to spend your time and money. And what's important is that you start tracking these numbers now so that you can begin to understand your true marketing costs moving forward. And I'm gonna lay these numbers out on today's show notes as well. So if you want to follow along visually as I'm talking, or go back afterwards and kind of re-review what we talked about today, go to profitwithoutworry.com forward slash episode dash 114. And it's all there. So you can see everything that we're talking about there. Okay, so when I'm doing marketing activities that take my time, and, and I tell this to my clients too, when you're doing activities that are taking your time, but not necessarily money out of pocket, I go ahead and I assign a dollar value to my time. So I'm just gonna keep everything with easy to calculate numbers here. <laughs> and I'm just gonna assign the cost of one hour of time as $200, right? And you can assign whatever number you want. You know, $20, $200, $1,000, whatever the heck you wanna assign to your time, that's up to you. Um, and, you know, for me, because um, $200 is not the number I use for myself, but that's the number I'm going to use for this example, just because it's easier to follow along as I'm talking through it. But a lot of times what I do is I take a look at, all right, what's all the client time that I'm spending and how much am I making from those clients? And then I divide that number and come up with roughly what an hour of my time costs for my clients. So let's go back to that list of activities that I went through just a minute ago. And let's assign, assign both time and dollar cost to each, right? So LinkedIn cold outreach. So if you do LinkedIn cold outreach, let's just say that you spend one hour a day every working day on this or about, you know, 30 hours a month. So I'd take $200 times 30 hours for a total cost of $6,000. Now, this is the point when many people start to freak out and say things like, no way LinkedIn time cost me that much. No way. Well, I want you to take the amount of money you charge clients to work with you and divide by the number of hours you work with those clients. What is your dollar per hour number? That number might surprise you, and knowing that number will help you really understand what it costs to do these other activities, because these aren't free, necessarily. You need to know how much these cost you and what they're bringing back to your business, right? So even though you're not having to pay $6,000 out of your bank account for this, you are, in effect, paying with your time because you can't get that time back. And so you need to know, is it a good, is it, 
a good use of $6,000 worth of my time to do this? And the answer could be yes. The answer could be no. The answer could be, yeah, but maybe not that much. All right, let's keep going. So let's say daily Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram posting. Some of these are evergreen and some are new posts. So let's say that this is about a two hour per week task or eight hours for the month. So eight hours times $200 an hour is $1,600. And then let's say that you do two Facebook Lives that you repurpose into your blog, into Instagram, into LinkedIn videos. And let's say that each video took you about an hour to plan, an hour to do, and an hour to repurpose onto other platforms. So two Facebook Lives times three hours each is six hours of work times $200 an hour or another $1,200. And then let's say that you did a podcast interview and it took about an hour for a pre-meeting, an hour to record, and an hour to write an email and do your social media to promote. So each podcast interview is about three hours total of your time times $200 an hour is about $600. And then four blog posts. And let's say that a blog post takes you three hours to research and write, an hour to put onto your blog platform platform, an hour to create the social media and emails to promote it. So it's about five hours per blog post times four blog posts is 20 hours a month times $200 is another $4,000. And then you have your eight emails that you uh, write and send out to your email list that each take an hour to write plus to put in your email service provider. So eight hours times $200 an hour is another $1,600. Can you see how this really can start to add up, right? And then you have $500 of Facebook ads that someone else runs for you. You pay that other person $1,500 a month for a total of $2,000 in ad costs. So if we add all these costs up, we get $17,000 in, in cost when you take your time cost and your out-of-pocket money cost for $20,000 in revenue from 10 sales calls. Now, that number sounds a whole lot different than somebody saying, hey, I spent $500 on Facebook ads and I got $20,000 this month. That sounds a whole lot different, doesn't it? But you can see when you you know, start calculating your time, go behind the scenes into everything that goes into making this up, it makes a big difference in the number. So the next question to ask is, what contributes most to making these sales? And on the other hand, what contributes least? Now that's gonna be different for every single one of us because our audiences are different, how we make, you know, the, the sales path that people take is different. Like there's just a lot of things that go into that. And so that's part of the reason why nobody can tell you that, you know, doing this one activity is going to be the golden nugget that opens up your business. You have to track this stuff for yourself and you have to know it for yourself. And so the next question that I ask myself that you should ask yourself is, you know, what contributes most to making these sales? Where are people coming from the most and where, what contributes least? What should I be cutting out? You see, you don't have to do it all. You don't have to do all the marketing things. In fact, simplicity I think is better and doing all the marketing things is probably part of what's leading to fewer sales here because your time is spread so thin. You're busy doing marketing instead of making sales and working with clients or you know, making sales and working with students or whomever you work with. And yes, this is a conversation I have with myself as well all the time because it can be really, um, I don't know, addictive, is that the right word? It can be really addictive to get into the action of doing things instead of the action of, um, you know, selling or or serving your clients, right? And so, let's say that you've got some basic tracking in place. So you listen to this podcast this month and. For the next month, you're really tracking things. You're tracking how much time you're spending on activities. You're tracking, you know, where your new clients are coming from. You're tracking all that stuff. So let's say you've got some basic tracking in place and you ask your new clients how they heard about you and what got them interested most in working with you. And you track your Google Analytics. Um, you track your leads from Facebook ads, from LinkedIn outreach, from whatever you do, right? So you're seeing where people are coming up. 
And after you review everything, you discover that your top lead sources are Facebook ads, referrals from others, people like, you know, past clients that you've worked with and peers, two older top performing blog posts that, you know, people find from Google searches, your already created marketing funnel with emails that lead to a sales call. So they're warming people up to get ready for sales calls with you and your sales calls. Everything else is kind of a wash. And armed with this basic information, you're able to adjust the following month to focus just on the things that are really driving new business for you. So in that month, after you're armed with all this information, you do the following. So you up your Facebook ad spend because you know that you're getting clients from there. So you spend $1,000 on Facebook ads plus $1,500 for somebody to run Facebook ads for you, which is $2,500. And you run ads to your two older top performing blog posts that people love. They're finding it, um, you know, via Google search. They're spending time reading it. And you decide, hey, I'm not going to create any new blog posts this month. I'm going to reuse the top performers that I already have created. Then you do outreach to past clients and peers. And you spend about two hours a week. So you're you know, reallocating some of your time from other things to say, you know what, if past clients and peers of mine are sending me, you know, new clients, I'm going to, I'm going to allocate two hours a week to do outreach to them. So we have eight hours for the month times $200 is $1,600. And then you use your marketing funnel to get your Facebook leads ready for a sales call. That's no additional cost to you because it's already created. So with this narrower marketing focus, you end up investing $4,100 between marketing, you know, money out of your pocket for Facebook ads and, and somebody to run your ads, and the time that you do for outreach to past clients and peers. But because you spent more on Facebook ads to attract new people into your audience and you had more time to do more sales calls, you ended up with more sales. So your monthly revenue went up to, let's say, $30,000 for the month. Now let's go back to the ROI calculator and figure out your ROI. So you have $30 of of revenue or sales minus the $4,100 in marketing costs that come from your time plus money out of pocket. That's $25,900 in profit after you've taken out your expenses. So $25,900 divided by your costs of 4,100 is an ROI of 6.3 or for every dollar you spent, you get a return of approximately $6.30. Can you see how powerful it is to track and know your numbers? We eliminated hours and hours of marketing work that wasn't really resulting in any more sales for this example while increasing revenue by $10,000. Now, obviously, I used round numbers to make this easier to follow and understand, right? Your big challenge now is just to get started. Start tracking your time. Maybe your revenue number is is $500 or $1,000. That's okay. Start tracking where those people are coming from. How are they finding out about you? Start tracking where you're spending your time. Start tracking where you're spending any money. And start keeping track of you know, how people come into your sales calls and where your revenue is coming from. Start asking people how they heard about you and what they found most compelling to move forward and buy from you. When somebody decides to hire you, it's a great time to say, you know what, I'm so looking forward to working with you. I'd love to know how did you first find out about me? You know, what was it that really made you say yes to me um, and, and start moving forward with this? What are you looking forward most to? That kind of insight is going to, it gives you an incredible, um, just focus. You know where people, you know what people are looking for. You know why people are working with you. And you know kind of um, what makes you special, I guess, like your competitive advantage. And this is really important. And only when you get these insights will you be armed with the information you need to run your business and make really good marketing choices moving forward. And again, 
I know th- I ran through a ton of numbers and you know, you're listening to me. You can see all the numbers along with the calculations. Um, all you have to do is go to today's show notes, which is at profitwithoutworry.com forward slash episode dash 114. And I'd love to hear from you. Have you been tracking your time and earnings? If not, no worries. You can start right now because most people don't. Most people really don't. And I'm talking even some of the bigger businesses, they really don't. When you do, though, boy, does it arm you with good information. Um, And I mean, it can be as simple as having a little notepad on your desk that you just, you know, make little notes on um, as you're having sales calls or as you're doing things. It doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. Do you calculate your ROI on where you spend your time and your money to attract new clients into your business? And what questions do you have about this? I would love to hear it. Hit me up on social media or email me, michelle at michellelevans.com. And as you were listening to this, did you think of someone who could use these insights about creating profit without worry in their own business? If you can think of someone who could use this, would you do both of us a big favor and share this episode with them? It's super easy to do from whatever podcasting app you're listening on or simply share the URL for today's show, which is profitwithoutworry.com forward slash episode dash 114. And your friend can listen right there without, you know, signing up for podcast software. They can just listen through whatever device they're on. And don't forget to download your freebie, the five steps to profit without worry. You can get that at today's show notes or profitwithoutworry.com forward slash free so that you can see what it takes to create a movement with your marketing. All right. I hope that you have an absolutely amazing week and that you start tracking and I'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place on another great episode of Profit Without Worry. See you then.